All right. What's up, guys? This is Eagle in Russia. In this video, we're going to be talking about Russian 20 unofficial symbols, world known, but yet unofficial. I'm Eagle in Russia. I make videos about uh, life in uh, St. Petersburg, especially in Russia in general, and videos concerning about Russian culture, uh, life, uh, ordinary things, reality. If you like the channel, please subscribe, give me a like it. Also, if you want to support my channel, links in below. You can support me by becoming a member, use uh, Super Chat, and of course, just the buy me coffee, which is actually buy me beer. Uh, link below, check it out. So let's go, 20 unofficial symbols of Russia. All right, first of all, we're going uh, to the number, number one. Let's go from one to 20. So there's 20 of them in this video, and this is based on the Russia Beyond uh, uh, article that I found, and it was interesting, so this is it. Here's the video. And the number one is, of course, babushka. Uh, grandmothers could be anywhere in the world, but babushkas are purely, purely Russian phenomenon. And yes, you can see these babushkas uh, all around in different videos. In my videos, they're usually selling something like uh, in uh, nearby metro on some squares, etc. So there's a lot of those in my videos as well. And sometimes I talk to them. They're really nice mo most of the time, of course. Sometimes they have a bad attitude and uh, so that's just life, but babushkas, you can see them even in the bold and bankrupt videos, you know, let's go see some babushkas. They differ uh, in appearance uh, by wearing the renowned babushka style headscarf and uh, they are most caring creatures uh, if you do not get the, to on the wrong side, which sometimes become toxic, especially when they want to feed you. Yes, babushkas are like really, they're like your own babushkas, grandmothers, even though you don't know them. They're like, are you okay? They, you know, these cute old ladies love you, overfeed you, and take enormous care of you. If they, if they, especially if they, if they are your own babushkas, uh, but also they can kick your butt. And a little bit more about babushka since they are so significant. Uh, the word babushka literally translates as a grandma or grandma or granny. Babushka has origins in the word baba, which in Russian historically meant a peasant woman, and now is considered a very rude word to call a woman. Don't call Russian women or any women babas. That's bad. The official definition of grandmother used to be babka, but now it's also considered a bad word, while a diminutive babushka has become a more common notion. Russians have a hundred ways to make the tender word babushka even more cute, like babulia, babusia, Babushenka, Babusienka, Babushenka. I'm not sure how to pronounce that. Never heard that one before. And Babushka in a wider meaning is an old lady, a synonym for Starushka, old person. Like After all the nice words that we dedicated to Babushkas, it's finally time to reveal the cards. A Babushka can also be extremely different. Seriously, there are some Babushkas that, could, uh, that should be called Ugly Babka. Uh, such Babushkas are very always first in any line pushing everyone aside with their elbows, they get around, uh, shopping bags with wheels, etc. I haven't come across with those, but I know they do exist. Such babushkas usually sit near their house or building and watch people going in and out. I've met, men, met many of those in my videos and I sat in, right next to them and talked to them. Uh, Я тут, ну просто красиво говорю. Тут красиво, цветочки и все. Ты хоть так пройдешь, наверное, хоть так все равно. Ага. All right. Then number two in the most symbolic Russian. Number two, balalaika. This is a triangle-shaped string balalaika. It's uh, probably the most Russian musical instrument uh, you can imagine. It's uh, known for being played in Russia since the 17th century and is actually still popular in total musical schools. Many modern modern bands even perform cover versions of popular songs on, on a balalaika, giving them a unique Russian folk flavor. Yes, uh, in St. Petersburg, I've also seen some performances, street artists, which, well, St. Petersburg, great city of uh, musicians, etc. People playing balalaikas, on the street as the street musicians. <laughs> mm. 
Number 3. Ballet. Even if you've never been to Russia, you've surely had a glimpse of a classical ballet. We are lucky to inform you that uh, it was indeed born and formed in Russia. Ballet is a Russian soul. Uh, Swan Lake composer by Pyotr Tchaikovsky is probably one of the most popular and frequently staged ballets in the world. I have also been actually to Mihailovsky, uh, Mihailovsky uh, Palace Theater and I filmed also a piece of this uh, ballet on my channel. <laughs> And all of these videos that I mention in different parts of this video, I'm going to be linking them down below in the description. So make sure to check them out, check them out after the, this video. And here is actually the Mihailovsky, Mihailovsky Theater. I collect in the, in the small versions of uh, the greatest buildings of St. Petersburg. Here's uh, Mihailovsky in the construction. And then number four. So number four is St. Basil uh, Cathedral. Uh, this church is on the Red Square of, uh, of Moscow and probably the most recognizable building in Russia. It's uh, reproduced just everywhere when it's about Russia. Stamps, postcards, book covers, and many more. But did you know that it's nine churches in one place? And that is actually has, has another official name. For me, the St. Basil Cathedral is actually, for me, is more like a, a St. Petersburg a Church of, of Spilled Blood in, uh, by the uh, Gribayed of a Canal. They're really, really similar as well, but uh, to me, it's the same thing. And then number five, Russian bears. Bears, of course, live around the world, but for some reason, it was Russia to be associated primarily with bears. There is a popular myth that bears often walk the city streets. Meanwhile, Western media has been stereotypically portraying Russia as a bear in cartoons for ages. So why did the bear come uh, as a symbol of Russia and still haven't seen any bears in, uh, in Russia? Then number six, is a black square. You know probably some of the Russian artists. At least you might know Kazimir Malevich and his iconic black square painting that makes people to, to this day argue whether it's an art or a trick. But uh, for the tw early 20th century, when he painted it, it was a revolutionary thing. Personally, that's a new thing for me. I'm so maybe uneducated. I haven't seen this black square anywhere. I've seen red square. Uh, then number seven, Blini. Uh, pancakes or crepes or uh, is an essential Russian food and even the Russian fast food Teremok which I filmed has mainly especially like different blinis uh, sweet and uh, salty uh, very interesting blinis can be eaten with hundreds of fillings and toppings and each Russian had its own recipe in which it uh, is handed down from generation to generation and that's how I know that for example my mom's grandmother and my mom knows how to do blini a certain way my wife's um, wife has her own style of doing them so blinis great there is a, even a whole week-long celebration for blinis of pancakes be uh, eating uh, pancakes eating which is called Maslinitsa. And I've also filmed that in my, for example, last video from Yelagin, which was preparing, which was preparing for uh, Blini week, Maslinitsa. Moving on guys to number eight, and this is Borscht soup or Borscht. My mom always corrects me. It's not soup, it's Borscht. Your first thought may be, wait, Borscht is Ukrainian, especially during these times around lately. But believe that uh, the arguments about which culture Borsh belongs to are as old as the cultures themselves. There's different versions of it, but uh, I say it's Russian. Then number nine, caviar. No matter whether it's black or red, caviar is a perfect in any color. Salted cold bubbles are perfect addition to other dishes and can be appetizers on its own. Russians don't bathe in caviar as you might think. Most Russians associate caviar with New Year's Eve and don't eat it on a regular basis. And yes, good caviar is actually even like locked up in stores. It's it's expensive stuff and uh, many eat only during and it's one of the like New Year's Eve dishes to eat uh, caviar on a bread with some other stuff. Personally, I don't like it. In St. Petersburg, there's also a caviar museum. Would you like me 
to go inside and film a video for it if so please comment down below halfway there number 10 churches and golden domes if you are from the future past or even another galaxy and accidentally showed up in some place in russia you would totally guess that it's russia merely for all golden domes everywhere that is true that is definitely true the main uh, one of the main most uh, important attractions are usually cathedrals churches and that that type of stuff and uh, i love it actually russian orthodox churches are usually Usually the most beautiful and attractive buildings frequently spotted from a distance and even abroad for example in Finland one of the most top locations are uh, Orthodox for example Helsinki Uspensky Cathedral let's put it like this way and of course anyway the main church Lutheran Church is actually based on a uh, Orthodox Isaac's Cathedral number 11 is five-pointed red star soviet star one of the most recognizable symbols of the soviet era is still seen all around russia in different like um, touristy products and uh, souvenirs and also these are included on stars on the moscow kremlin towers the symbol uh, was featured on russian imperial military form and uh, in 1918 also became the main symbol of the red army the star's five rays symbolize the union of the world's five continents in the struggle for freedom. Then number 12, Kalashnikov. There is a joke that no matter what Russians do, they always end up with Kalashnikov. I don't get it. This famous and the most spread around the world automatic rifle was designed by Mikhail Kalashnikov in 1947 and is still produced. My connection to this is while filming the artillery museum in St. Petersburg, they actually in the centerpiece is um, Kalashnikov's uh, statue right there. And once again, links are of all these uh, references are in my the description. Then we go to the number 13, Koch Loma. Kahloma is one of the most popular Russian related designs. It's, uh, it's red, black and gold pattern that has been painted on the wooden tableware for over 300 years. The recognizable firebirds and floral ornaments became a truly Russian style and brand. And this is something that mostly like souvenir shops sell and many show have like at home, but it's not like used that much. Number 14 is Kakoshnik. This traditional female headwear is unknown for ages and each Russian region had its own form of decoration. There are many types of kakoshniks from uh, small tiaras to giant ones that resemble horns. Whoa. Number 15, one of the most popular and famous ones out of the whole list is Matryoshka. It's the most iconic Russian doll resembling a lady in a shawl. Inside her wooden figure is a hidden doll of a smaller size and an even smaller doll. They can be for from three to up to dozen of dolls inside depending on the size of the largest. By the way, it's not a traditional toy per se that Russian kids played with, the, uh, which, uh, with for ages. True that, once again, a very touristy stuff and uh, in different touristic shops and uh, souvenir shops you can see these in different painted not as uh, like uh, female form and they are like you know they can be presidents like Yeltsin then there's uh, Putin etc so on and so on and then you have versions of international presidents you can have Putin and you can have like uh, you know Clinton etc number 16 we're getting close to the end Russian salads it's called salad olivier Olivier or uh, like a winter salad, Zimni salad. While everyone around the world calls this a salad Russian, yes, I, d I don't never heard that, but that's what it says here. Russians call it Olivier and believe that it, uh, it was named after a French chef who supposedly created while cooking for the Tsar family. In any case, during the Soviet era, the recipe of this once uh, chick dish was simplified and uh, so that everyone could prepare it at home it's one of the most important like new year's eve dish dishes for sure 17 17 guys some of our uh no secret that russians are obsessed with tea for sure even though for example st petersburg the uh the coffee is on the rise like big time but yes tea is an important part of russian culture and good tea or yeah depending on the budget and uh, this samovar kettle is one of the most big reasons for its um, status it's it gathered the whole big family around to drink tea most samovars can take a lot of water and stay hot for extended periods interesting number 18 sputnik in English, Sputnik is a satellite, but this certain notion entered the English language as is. 1957, with the launch of Sputnik, the first artificial Earth satellite, the space era of humanity began. Go Russia! 
or Soviet Union. 19 is vodka. Uh, no additional comments are needed here <laughs> because this word even enters the other languages in its Russian form. And uh, I have visited in St. Petersburg the vodka museum and, uh, and drank a few vodkas and yes, I know some vodka. My favorite vodka from Russia to be brought when it's legal is um, Beluga vodka, premium vodka. Very cheap in Russia, very expensive abroad. And number 20, the last one. Can you guess what it is? It's Ushanka. Unfortunately, I don't have it here with me. I have many Ushankas also. Ushanka hat. It's another typical Russian headdress with historical roots. If you need a Russian related costume for Halloween or Russian style party, this hat is a must. And yes, most of the time, the typical Ushanka hats are, you, are just for souvenirs as well. There are different versions of them, but the most like typical ones is, well, I, you can see that in the souvenirs, stops, kiosks and shops. All right, guys, this was 20 symbols of Russian symbols, unofficial symbols. So what you think about that? Did I miss something? Uh, please uh, hit that like button. Also become a member for more content and for the support. I'm eager in Russia and uh, see you guys in the next video. Пока-пока.